This thing is pretty amazing, but for $1,600 US, it better be. This is the graphics card that mere mortals need not desire. It costs as much or more than most complete gaming PC systems. It sucks up a tremendous amount of power, and it's so big that even some ATX cases can't contain its girth. So yeah, now that we've gotten that out of the way, it's still maybe the most impressive piece of hardware that I've ever reviewed. Let's find out why. Meet the Silent Wings Pro 4, the latest in the legendary line of silent, high-performing fans from Be Quiet. Available in 120 or 140 millimeter sizes and with a high-speed option, the Silent Wings Pro 4 provide next-level cooling performance for your system using their optimized fan blade design and virtually inaudible operation. And with a 300,000-hour lifespan and 5-year warranty, these things are built to last. Check out the link below for more information. Thanks for tuning in to the BPS Customs review of NVIDIA's latest flagship graphics card, the RTX 4090. If you like this kind of content, check out this video right up here, where I break five 3 Mark world records with this very GPU, and consider getting subscribed and hitting that notification bell down below. It really does help the channel out a ton. So this beefy boy arrived a couple of weeks ago, and I've been putting it through a battery of tests since then. In this video, I'm gonna be comparing it to a few products that you all are probably already familiar with. An RTX 3080, an RTX 3090, a 3090 Ti, and AMD's RX 6950 XT. As of now, these are the closest analogs to what the 4090 can provide, but as you'll see in a minute, they don't really even come close to touching its performance. With the 4090, Nvidia sized down a manufacturing process anyway, and the AD102 die uses TSMC's 5 nanometer node, despite the misleading 4N nomenclature. This is the Ada Lovelace generation of cards, as Nvidia likes to name each product line after a famous scientist, but for simplicity's sake, I'm sure you'll hear the 4000 series referred to as either Ada or Lovelace repeatedly over the next few years. The AD102 massively increases the number of CUDA cores over the outgoing RTX 3090 Ti, which itself was only a slight bump up from the 3080 and 3090. Not only that, but it does have a huge advantage when it comes to clock speeds. For Ampere, when I was doing some extreme overclocking with the RTX 3090, I could barely get it to crack 2400 megahertz, and standard operating frequencies were somewhere in the 2000 megahertz range. During my initial testing with the 4090, it sat at over 2700 for the duration, peaking at around 2760. This is in stark contrast to every other card I tested, with the 6950 XT coming closest at 2590 megahertz. This is a testament to the increased efficiency afforded by using a smaller process node. And even though, yes, this card is extremely greedy when it comes to how many watts it sucks up, it actually compares rather favorably to the 3090 Ti. Now also note that the 30 series cards I tested were all AIB models rather than Founders Edition cards, and that the 6950XT is the model of power efficiency in this group. But to be fair to the 4090, for the performance that this thing puts up, a modest bump in power requirement is not that unreasonable. With that being said, I ran all of my tests with an 850 watt Corsair power supply and didn't run into any instability issues. But I think that if you're gonna be pairing the 4090 with an Intel 12th or 13th gen chip, you're likely looking at a thousand watt power supply as a requirement. My test bench used a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, which affords me some power headroom when doing these tests. But with the basic operating specs out of the way, let's jump into the meat of this video, the benchmarks. I ran my tests in two separate groups, but all games were tested at 4K and ultra settings. The first group was with no DLSS enabled and no ray tracing features turned on. So this is just pure rasterized performance. The second group of tests were also run without DLSS, but with all of the ray tracing eye candy turned up to maximum. This really pushes the 128RT cores of the 4090 and shows the differences as compared to, say, the RTX 3090, which only had 82. I'm gonna save DLSS testing and specifically a discussion of DLSS 3.0 for its own video, as I think it deserves that. DLSS has improved markedly since it was first introduced, 
and now produces almost indistinguishable graphical results with an enormous boost to frame rate. DLSS 3.0 certainly adds to that, and the titles that I was able to test with were pretty amazing, so stay tuned for that one. Let's slide me right out of the way here and check out our first group of results. F122 is up first and we're certainly off and running here as the 4090 more than doubles up the RTX 3080's result at 245 FPS in 4K and ultra settings. It also puts 100 FPS on the 3090 Ti, the closest rival here. Far Cry 6 is up next and although the results aren't quite as drastic, there's still a large measurable gain generation over generation. The 6950 XT also groups in fairly close to its Ampere rivals. Guardians of the Galaxy brings the return of the huge performance delta as the 4090 tops 200 frames per second in this test, with the 6950 XT bringing up the rear. Red Dead Redemption 2 looks a lot like Far Cry 6, with the Ampere cards running close together and the 4090 way out in the lead. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is an AMD sponsored title, so I'm a little surprised to see that the 6950XT didn't put up a better number here, as it was tied with the 3080. The 4090 again was in a league of its own. And at the risk of sounding repetitive, Dirt 5 is a massive win for the 4090 as it puts huge distances between itself and the 3090Ti. The 4090's Borderlands 3 result again topped 100 frames per second with ease, cracking the 130 FPS barrier and leaving it well clear of the competition. Metro Exodus is a title that I would expect the Nvidia cards to come out on top in, and in fact that's what we see here, with the 6950 XT tying the 3080 but falling well short of the 4090 which again broke 130 FPS. And finally we have Cyberpunk and its new built-in benchmark which is incredibly taxing. But the 4090 made it look easy, hitting 80 FPS and having the game run as smoothly as I've really ever seen. Let's next compile those numbers into a performance comparison chart, and don't worry, I'll summarize this giant mess in a second. Here is the performance scaling of each of our cards in our tests using the RTX 3080 as a baseline. That means that the 3080 is assigned a score of 100, and each result is then compared to that baseline as a percentage. So, for instance, the top bar shows that in Cyberpunk, the 4090 performed at 205% of the RTX 3080's frame rate. Feel free to pause the video here to browse through the numbers if you'd like, but here is a summary of that data averaged out on all the games. Overall, the 4090 is 82% faster than the 3080, and although this chart doesn't show this exactly, this does translate to 70% faster than the 3090. That is an absolutely absurd generational performance leap. Now let's get fancy and talk ray traced performance. F122 is again up first and wouldn't you know it, the 4090 absolutely crushes here. It comes in one frame per second from doubling up the RTX 3090, which to be clear is still a killer of a GPU. Side note, RTX 3090s right now are going for under $1,000 and might be a great choice for those of you looking for a high end option, but those of you that don't have $1,600 plus to spend. 24 gigs of VRAM goes a long way. Next, let's swing back to Far Cry 6, where the lead is substantial, but not nearly as crazy as in F1. Still, with all the RTX features cranked up, the 4090 breaks 100 FPS without a sweat. I expected Cyberpunk on the Ultra Ray Tracing preset to be kind of a bloodbath, and even the 4090 struggled here, only managing 43 FPS. But when compared to everything else in our test group, this is still a very good result. Dirt 5 brought us back to the crazy over the top numbers and with 166 FPS at ultra settings and ray tracing turned on, I mean, I don't know if there's really much more to say. Guardians of the Galaxy, whew, look at that result. The 4090 more than triples the RTX 3080 at 165 FPS. 165 frames per second versus 52. Now, I guess let's just see the last slide, which is Metro Exodus, and of course, we have another dominating victory for the 4090. As I did prior, I compiled all of the data into a comparison chart using the 3080 as a baseline. Four of the six games I tested saw 200% or more scaling from the 3080, and Guardians was at 317%, holy moly. To again make this easier to digest, here is a summary where we can see that overall the 4090 is 112% faster than the 3080 and 96% faster than the 3090 at 4K and with ray tracing features cranked up. An absolutely insane result. 
So I guess that's where we're going to leave it. The RTX 4090 is, without a doubt, the most powerful graphics card on the market and a huge leap over its predecessors. At $1,600, it's likely out of reach for a lot of consumers, but for those who can muster up the scratch for one, it's actually not a bad deal considering the performance gains that you're getting. It's almost twice as fast as the 4090 and it costs 60% more in the current market. That, dare I say, is actually not bad. I think Nvidia learned its lesson after the debacle that was the 20 series of graphics cards. Turing was mediocre at best, providing only marginal generational gains for a huge jump in price. The 30 series got them back on track, and it looks like the 40 series, headlined by this 4090, will continue this trend. I can get behind this product. Yes, it's expensive, but it's a Halo product. It's supposed to showcase the best of what a company has to offer at any given time. Yes, it requires a lot of power, but you get so much in return, and people who are spending $1,600 on a GPU likely already have or can afford a 1,000 watt power supply. Call me crazy, but I think this $1,600 product is actually a pretty good deal when all is said and done. It's not for everybody, but it's definitely for someone, and you can count me as a consumer who will be using this card probably for the next few years. Thanks so much for tuning into today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to drop a like on the way out, and as always, I'll see you next time.